Good evening. I mean, it's, uh, it's got to the point now where before I even switch from holding a screen to face cam, I have like five viewers. And now it's gone down to three, so that's what you get for talking about it, I suppose. Um, not sure if I mentioned, but I got affiliated. Pretty proud of myself. Uh, quickly make sure I have audio on so I can actually hear any notifications that come up because I missed a follower last stream and I felt really bad about it. I am... Sorry, I'm getting lots of... My phone keeps just vibrating. I need, I, I'll tell you what. I'll stop being rude and I'll put it on Do Not Disturb. Okay, so... I can't remember who I mentioned this to. Oh! Man. You didn't even let me finish my first sentence. Thank you so much for the sub. I really appreciate that, Amumu. You didn't have to. Love you always. Uh, <laughs> if your first emote isn't a copy emote, I will be disappointed. Yeah, we should do something about that. Like I, I've mentioned a couple of times now, I've got a, uh, a friend of mine who's a designer kind of making some stuff for me. So uh, I'll keep you posted on that. Emotes is something I want to do. Um, but yeah, you're actually my second sub. I'm really sorry to tell you that. I uh, when we got affiliated, I was really like excited, and I got one of my friends to Amazon Prime sub me just so I could see what would happen. Um, but you're the first real sub. How does that feel? So I can't remember who was talking about this recently. I think it was Stan was asking about like how do multi maps work and stuff like that. So I, uh, I thought I'd real quick just go through the basics of what's like what's in a hash map, you know, like what's the recipe or whatever. Um, something I have to admit before we go into this, like I'm I'm vaguely aware of all the different like probing methods, but linear probing is the only one that I've ever really done. So um, we're probably going to go and, and actually I'm not even sure if linear probing is what I think it is. Uh, I'm probably also going to avoid rebalancing and stuff like that, at least initially. Uh, rebalancing could be like a stretch goal or something like that. Oh shit, I've always wondered about multi-maps. So, so I've never made one, but the theory is simple, and I'm hoping that I don't make a fool of myself writing one on stream. Uh, so first up, we need to make our package. Uh, then Let's just call it hash map. If we ever decided to release it, I would call it something other than HashMap, I think, because it uh, it collides with the standard library name. It really annoys me when things collide with the, uh, <laughs> the standard library name. Okay, so, basic... Okay, starting point. We'll actually do this properly and we'll actually implement the map type. Okay, uh, V... And we'll actually see what does a what does a map need? Okay, it's actually not that many things. I reckon we can do this in one stream. I've only got like uh, times it now twenty one of seven. Uh, I probably can't stream past eleven because it's a school night. But I reckon we can quite reasonably get this done. So. What's the theory behind a hash map? So how does it work? So the the key thing behind it is converting your key object into a essentially an index into some list. That's the idea, right? You you want to be able to look things up by a key and get the answer back in, ideally, constant time. So, 01, ideally. In reality, like, tree maps are log n because they use, like, B trees behind the scenes. Um, hash maps typically degrade badly, so you can get awful behavior, at least to on for lookups and stuff like that. So he is saying, what's a multi-map? A multi-map is a map that can store multiple values under the same key. Um, it, so you can essentially think of it as a map of something to list of some things. 
instead of the instead of an insert replacing what's there, it adds to it. Um, so what I'm going to start with is I am going to say private final list. Uh, am I going to use map entry? I think I am. Buckets. Uh, can I create map entries myself? Or do I have to? Okay, so it looks like all of the standard library implementations create their own map entry class. Okay, fair enough. I'll make my own as well. Um, but I'll just real quick go through the simplest possible hash map I can think of. It's not going to be super quick. It's not going to be super robust, but it will work, right? Of different types or all the same type? Um, that is not a constraint. You could have a map of key to object, and you could have like a heterogeneous list of things. Heterogeneous? 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 Different things. If it's an object, it can be anything, right? So, uh, and then I will say this is a new array list. Uh, it's quite important actually that we have an initial size. So, private static int initial size. We'll eventually get around to parameterizing this, but for the time being, we'll just do it the easy way. Uh, <clears throat> so all we really need to do is in our put we say mm, oh, I've done this wrong already <laughs> uh, it's a list of lists it has to be a list of lists buckets are a list of things um, why do I why, why can I not just do that I would have thought not supported at language level five. What? See, this really annoys me about IntelliJ. Why does it not default to something more sensible? Like, I feel like eight's a pretty sensible default in 2018. Maybe even nine. Okay. So when we put, we will... Oh, we can use compute if absent and all the cool stuff like this. <clears throat> uh, first things first, we say key dot... So this is cheating, but I'm just going to take the hash code that Java gives us. I know a bunch of hash map implementations don't. They will do other kind of funky things. Um, so I, but I'm just going to take the, the hash code for now. Um, then we do buckets dot uh, what do I have in here okay it's just simple get hash modulo buckets dot size okay, v so that's the bucket that our thing is going to be put into. Then we need to scan the bucket to see if it's already in there. So we'll say for map entry kv entry in bucket if entry dot get key dot equals our key. We will. Is there? A, can, am I am I being silly? Is there a better bucket dot? Okay, there is a replace. Oh, I probably just want to use index of, don't I? So if I say index of suspicious call to index of. Reports method calls to parameterize collections where the actual argument type does not correspond to the collection's element type. Oh, of course. Of course. 
So yeah, I can't quite do that. Would upsearch make sense in a multi-map? I'm not quite sure what you're asking, sorry. Could you be slightly more specific? Uh, <clears throat> I'm thinking I need the index, or do I need the index? Or can I just, does this entry allow me to, oh, I can set the value, great. Set value, and I want to return the value, I think, yep. Uh, otherwise, I want to do bucket.add. <clears throat> so I need to make my map entry type now. Uh, I'm not quite sure where to put static inner classes, but I'll go with the top. Private static final. Oh, that's another thing. I need to get used to finalizing my classes. Um, private static final entry kv implements map entry kv <coughs> uh, oh whoops bada bing private final k key private final v value constructor both of the things then turns key value and I actually can't finalize the value can I? This value equals value return value. <coughs> uh, query but never update. Okay, we'll get around to that in time. Huh? Incompatible types. What are you talking about? Oh, uh, that should fix that. Fabulous. Is the map going to be thread safe? It certainly can be. Certainly can be. Ah. There you go. Done. Happy. Uh, we can be better than that. So then we say new entry key value, bada bing, then <laughs> synchronize makes me sad. Why does it make you sad? It doesn't make me like tremendously sad. I don't think it's that terrible. Because <clears throat> uh, I like performance. Nice. Um, this one's relatively simple. We just need to say m dot for each. Let's put. There's probably a nicer way of doing that, but for now that will work. It's not horrible, but in 90% of cases, there is a better solution. Yeah, probably. Um, I gotta be honest, I haven't written much explicitly threaded code. I know a lot of the theory, but it's not something like, I've never written like production grade code that uses low level synchronized primitives and stuff like that. I think it's something that I know that I'm bound to fuck up. So I, I rely heavily on the, the higher level synchronization primitives like the executor services and things like that. So we have our put, the get should be similar. So we get our bucket, then we have to, we have to go through it and we'll say, get value, otherwise we return null, which I think is the correct behavior for get. I might have to read up and make sure that is the case. Um, contains value can be, oh, contains value, okay, okay, we can't be quite so cavalier about that. 
contains key. Uh, again, relatively similar. Then we search through the bucket. You'll notice there's a kind of similarity to all these methods. Uh, contains value is a little more tricky because it has to be on, but that is fine. We can just say list map dot entry key value bucket in buckets. Then we can say four in the bucket if entry dot value equals value return true otherwise return false um, should contains accept a generic oh you mean here uh, it would be wonderful if it did uh, I'm not the problem I think is yeah, the map interface itself doesn't. So I'm implementing the actual Java Util map interface, and the map interface doesn't generify these things. Uh, I'm happy to enter into a debate with you as to whether it should, because I, I think I'm on your side here that it probably should be generic. I can't think of excellent reasons to make it an object, but then again, I've only thought about it for the last five or six seconds. Um, good call though, it, but in this case, no, it's because it's implementing the actual map interface. If I make them generic, then it doesn't work. It wouldn't compile. <coughs> uh, what's next? Clear is easy. Oh, um, okay, it's not as, quite as easy as I thought it was going to be, but I need to do. I just need to do buckets.clear. Yeah. Then, oh, let's change that to map dot entry. I wonder if I can do some stream magic here. Buckets dot stream dot flat map. I think flat map bucket dot stream. Oh. Oh, can we replace this method reference? Collection stream. Then I can then I can collect all of them into a set. I think that works. I think anyway. Userman two, welcome by the way. I haven't seen your name before. It's good to see you. Did you did you browse randomly through Twitch and find my stream? If so, that's pretty awesome. Normally, I only see object being used in things like arrays that contain anything. C sharp has an array that is not generic, but that's the only case of a contains slash add that uses object that I've seen. Yeah, I think it is a bit strange that the map interface takes an object. Very strange. One of those odd quirky Java decisions that I don't really know the the reason behind. Stream uh. Stream Magic. Whoop. Uh does it need to be generic? Uh no. It doesn't, but can't think of a good reason to not make it generic, other than the fact that it isn't, and making it generic will break everything. Um, use my two. I lurk on programming community a lot and saw this. Awesome. Welcome. I appreciate your being here and getting involved. It relies on hash code, which is implemented in object anyway, so it being generic does nothing. So, there are a bunch of methods on object that I disagree with, and I can understand why. Java has them based on the past, but I think things like hash code and equals, what's the other one? Hash code equals, that might, possibly that's the two of them, but that they should be interfaces rather than just on object. I think it would make much more sense if they were interfaces. Then you'd get 
so then the map, for example, can take uh, generic type K extends hashable or whatever. Magic Carpet Ride is now following. Welcome. I don't see you in chat. Get involved. Say hi. Much love. Uh, I just found the copy pass. I didn't realize it was sort of date. Uh, which copy pasta? Samo just subscribed with the tier one sub. My homies. Thank you very much, man. I really appreciate that. Far too kind. <clears throat> Have I told you how much I hate Twitch support? You haven't. Tell me more. Go for it. Uh, Huntex says, that might be, but I think rewriting the core Java object is above the map interface is worth. Yeah, I totally agree with you that. Totally agree with you. Oh, Craig in there with the Twitch Prime repping. So again, we're going to copy some more code, then uh, Ot Hello Fun, or oh, oh Othello Fun, sorry, wow, Christ, that's, that's happened on video now and I can't get rid of it. Othello Fun, welcome, thank you for the follow. Cyclone says, wait, but if it's object, aren't your keys and values scattered all over memory? Uh, it seems like it would defeat part of the benefits of the hash table. Yeah. Oh. What's up? No, 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 I was like, uh, all my family are staying here for the wedding. In the house. In the house. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's Sorry. gonna be, that's gonna be great. <laughs> no, I can't wait. Yeah, she, she literally just said, you know, Jade is rang and she said, oh, um, me and Steve need to stay and Gran's coming with us in the car. And Mom and Gab are hoping to sleep over a night as well, then Nan and Gonky might be too. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine actually. I, I, yeah, thank you for ask, asking permission. <laughs> Love it. They are traveling the furthest. Yeah, yeah, they are, yeah. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> I have three subs. How about that? Yay! Well done. Yeah, thank you. Um, Very proud of you. Right, I'll leave you to it. Thank I'll just you. Let me know. See you in a bit. We have a wedding date, by the way. Uh, tell Ms. Sam who hi. I will. She'll appreciate that. Yeah, we have a wedding date. Um, March 30th. Literally, yeah, literally, this this is the first time I've told anyone. <laughs> it's kind of sad that I've announced it to my uh, wonderful set of Twitch viewers. But yeah, March 30th, March 30th, 2019. Craig, mark that in your calendar. Oh my word, where was I? So if we match on the entry, we want to remove this entry from the bucket. Is there a better way we can do this? There is. There almost certainly is. Bucket dot remove. Okay, so yeah, remove if uh, entry dot get key dot equals key. Uh, Do I need to do something with the fact that I have removed? I'll need to look up the uh, contract for remove. Lady Rose, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Yep. That's the plan. How old are you now? I'm 27. I've been 27 all year. Feels good. Uh, the few things I need to look up here. So. Removes all that satisfy the pre- nah, it's not ideal. I was hoping it would terminate when it found something, but whatever, it doesn't. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. Uh, so what is the... Oh, I did not want to do that, did I? No. If I go up to remove, what does it say? Returns the previous value associated with key or null if there is no mapping for it. Okay, so I, I don't want to do it like that. I, don't really, I think I want to do it like map dot entry. Oh, this is going to look ugly. Forgive me. Uh, what can I say? Yeah, index of... Oh, Christ. 
Sod it. Let's go with let's go with the ugly root. Forgive me. Get key equals key. Break. Oh, then how do we know if we found it? Ugh. Did you study computer science or you learn coding yourself? Can I have a little bit of both? I, I do have a computer science degree. Uh, I actually studied with Craig, who you see in the chat there. Um, we were at university together and I did a lot of coding in my spare time as well. So while I was studying computer science, I was doing a lot of extracurricular stuff, getting involved in some open source code, things along those lines. So yeah, a little bit of both, a little bit of both. Oh, this is this is ugly as hell. Do I want to do this? So I'm about to do this. William equals <laughs> false. There is definitely 100% a better way of doing this, but it's all good. Uh, if not found, turn null. Otherwise, bucket dot remove i what does remove return ah and then I say dot get value and that seems like a valid remove method you did not huh oh yeah well you studied I mean it was basically computer science right like you did something security related, so we were in a lot of the same classes. Uh, so I guess computer science was not tough if you code in your spare time. Mm, no, I think I think the standard for computer science in UK universities is a lot lower than it is in US universities, and we didn't. Um, oh, you mean you didn't do any spare time? Right, right, right. And we uh, like the university we went to. So the course that Craig did in university. The university that we went to was quite well known for it, and they did it to a pretty high standard, but I don't think a lot of their other courses were that high quality. There were some classes that I super enjoyed. I really loved the operating system class. I really enjoyed the networking class, even though it wasn't one of the classes I had to do. I just kind of turned up occasionally, because the lecturer for it was just awesome. <coughs> The computer graphics class was fantastic. The, the lecturer for that was amazing. I had tons of fun in that. Um, other than that, though, we did a bunch of like UML and object-oriented analysis and design and all that kind of crap. Like the stuff that really sucks the life and soul out of what you're doing. Uh, so I have remove, I have get, I have all these things. Is empty. Uh, is just buckets dot is empty, right? Oh, not quite. Uh, so I can say if buckets is empty, then yes. We can say true. But then I also need to say for list. I wonder if this is possible. Because I don't care what's in there. Yeah, if bucket dot is empty, true. Oh wait, no. Crap. No! I need to say buckets dot... <clears throat> Any match. No, not any match. All match. Uh -huh. All match. There we go. There we go. That's what I wanted. In fact, what am I doing? I need to do that. Easy peasy. Uh, I also studied CS in Germany, but at German University the stuff is very abstract and theoretic, so I had to learn programming on the job. Yeah, I hear that complaint from a bunch of other parts of the world as well. Uh, it's those times where you really appreciate VAR. Yeah, VAR would be nice. Although sometimes I appreciate not having VAR. Like when I'm reading code and I'm wondering, like, what is that thing? like? It's nice to know what type it is, although it is nice to not have to type the type of it. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is buckets stream map 
size collectors dot something. Oh, do I have to do something? I don't want to do function identity. What? Huh? What? Huh? To int function. Oh, Christ. Oh, map to int. Right. Yeah, this is... This is the part of the stream API that I'm not a big fan of. IntelliJ is preferred over Eclipse. Uh, I think a lot of people do. I don't, I mean, Eclipse certainly isn't irrelevant, but I think a lot of people prefer IntelliJ and it's the ID that I use in work. So I, I try and practice with it whenever I can. Fajita's saying, the few CS classes that I took at Rutgers were superb in my opinion, good mixture of theory and application, but I might not be the best person to ask. Why might you not be the best person to ask? You were there, right? Uh, I think implementation of collection store size in a field field could make size and is empty much simpler. What do you mean? Sorry. Implementation of collections store size in a field. Yeah, I'm not sure what you mean. <coughs> so I think I think this is oh apart from key set. Oops. Right, so I think that's a vaguely reasonable hash map class. Kalawala with the uh, the hundred bits, world first hype. Thank you very much, Kala. I appreciate that. How are you doing on this fine evening? Uh, Sam is saying keep int size as a class field, increment and decrement with add and remove calls to the is empty function. Uh, yeah, I, could, I definitely could do that, and that that's an optimization that I may go for soon. Um, I just wanted to get a really quick functional hash map. So you um, do you int exist in Java? No, every every integral type in Java is signed. So this is a functional hash map, and I think it is the simplest hash map I can think of. And I just want to write a bunch of tests for it now. And I was just kind of thinking to myself, wouldn't it be nice if there was a set of tests, like a standardized set of tests that made sure map implementations were correct? I think that would be cool. But I don't think there are. Um, so, test. Let's go. Uh, nope, nope, stop that. There we go. New package, UK, co, samhu, hash map. So, any questions up until this point, I realize I kind of like blitzed through that fairly quickly. And there are a bunch of things I can probably simplify about the implementation. There's quite a bit of duplication between some of these methods, but happy to answer questions and go over parts of this. Uh, hash map test. Actually, I'm just going to say map test. And I'm going to write a generic set of map tests that can be parameterized. Uh, do I have J unit? I don't. I don't have anything. Dependencies. Let me just quickly go and look up the. Uh, how would you go about balancing this? Is the ideal size of buckets square root of items? Uh, so how I would go about balancing it? I'm. I think I will do that next, and we'll think about it in interesting ways. Uh, the, the way that I've seen done, and I think this is the way that the Java standard library hash map does it, is you have a... You go up in buckets of power of two, um, and you have what's called a load factor, so you wait until you hit your load factor. And when you hit your load factor, you resize uh, by what's called a resize factor, I think. So you could say, if it gets to more than 75% full, increase the size of the, the buckets by, like increase the available buckets by two. Like, as in like multiply it by two or something like that. What are you currently doing? Uh, yeah, so as Fiat says, I'm making a hash map and I'm making it entirely for the lulls. There's no like uh, particular reason behind it. It's just in a previous stream, somebody asked me how multi-maps work. And I said at some point I could stream from kind of like first principles making a hash map and then like changing that into a multi-map so you can kind of see 
not just like what a multi map gives you, but how it gives you that. So it's just um, it's just yeah, knowledge. That's kind of what we're going for here. Uh, welcome, by the way. It's good to, it's good to uh, good to see you. Swishing all day. Right, I'm gonna quickly look up the J Unit Five Maven copy pasta that I need, and as always, Google's Truth Library, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, I'll pull it over here so you can see what I'm doing. User guide. Actually, I'm just gonna quickly go J Unit Five Maven. That normally gets me the thing that I want to see. Here we go. Oh, which ones? Okay, right. I remember I need two of these. Something, something, Jupiter, something, something. I wish it would just give me something I can copy and paste like most other libraries do. Ugh, so, so frustrating. All these lovely stars, dude, you're killing it all day. Oh, killing it day one, yeah. I, I'd like, I'm, I'm extremely humbled by... Ever, so ever since I started streaming code, so I've streamed for, hey Craig, when did we start streaming? Like six months, a year, something like that, a while ago. And I streamed gaming, I streamed some coding, and the gaming streams got almost no viewers. Kalawala's been a pretty dedicated viewer for a long time. And it, like, it seems like streaming gaming, there's not much I can offer to gaming, right? Like I, I'm not very good, I'm not particularly entertaining in a way that people enjoy. But the, ever since I started coding regularly on the stream, people have just been like lapping it up. It seems like almost all of my streams get over ten viewers, which is you know is, that's loads for me. I'm happy with that. Um, people kind of following every stream. Now I have three subscribers, so watch out. Form an orderly queue. Yeah, no, it just feels great. It feels like it's all kind of coming coming together. What games did you play? Uh, primarily we played the Battle Royale games like PUBG, we played a little bit of Realm Royale, uh, played some Rocket League, yeah. Uh, my Rocket League was re reasonably good. Not world class or anything, but I, I could play and talk about it. And You have a monster PC for coding, can you hear it? Oh, it's gone quiet now, but yeah, it's um, it's a pretty beefy PC. Yeah, we played some CSGO last night. I didn't stream it, but it was good fun. I'm not very good at CSGO, but it was good fun. Uh, I love this guy's blog, Baeldung. Baeldung. Every time I Google something Java-related, this pops up and usually has the answer that I'm looking for. So add in that dependency, pull in the Google Truth Library. Shill shill in that truth library. Then we'll get some tests written, like the good programmers that we are. What's your CS rank? Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't think I have one. Don't think I have one. I haven't played much CSGO. Map test, so now we say... Public void. Um, put get. Whatever. It doesn't really matter what it's called for now. Uh, Microsoft in reading. Microsoft in my, micros fast. Craig, are you drunk? <laughs> in Reading in the morning. Oh, you're in Reading! Dude, you should come and say hi. I haven't seen you since, like, the weekend. So, actually, I'll just say map of string to string. I call it under test, because I've got into the habit of doing that. Equals new hash map. I will say under test dot put. Has my keyboard layout changed in the last couple of seconds? Oh, that's better. How did I change that? Reading the place, yeah, that is how you say Reading. 
yeah, we have Reading, we have Reading, yada yada yada. Uh, yeah, will you get a chance to be in London? Do you know? You getting the train down? I suppose. Foo uh, bar. Does that return anything that I should care about? I've forgotten already. I wrote it like twenty minutes ago. What does it return? <clears throat> oh, it returns the value. Okay. Oh, wait, I may have done this wrong. Uh, is it supposed to return the previous value? Yeah, it returns the previous value if there's no mapping. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll so because we, we can see this test fail, we'll say put returns previous value. <coughs> equals this, let me say assert that prev is null import static <coughs> oh wait what okay right, thank you Assert that prev is null, then we say prev equals. Actually, we just need to. Don't need to mess around with that variable. We just need to say that, followed by. It's equal to as. And this should fail because we implemented it wrong. <coughs> Kalawar saying, if you ever tried to use one of those ergonomic split keyboards, it messes with my mind so much. I haven't, although people have recommended that I give it a try. I have awful typing habits. Awful, really bad typing habits. I don't use the right keys for the right thing, uh, the right digits for the right keys at all. Um, and someone recommended using a split keyboard to get better at that, but I've just never done it. Um, driving five to six hours there and back. Gotta go via work to pick someone else up. Ouch. I guess you get to split the petrol money there, right? Which is nice. So I have a divide by zero here. Uh, I think it is because... Bucket size starts off as zero? Maybe? Shouldn't do. Divide by zero. Let's quickly figure out what's going on here. Debugger to the rescue. Yeah, bucket size zero. Oh. It's not buckets that size that I want, is it? It's buckets capacity. Hmm. What happens when I do... Wait a second. Wait a second. I thought... Huh. Okay, so I need to properly initialize it then with all the lists and things. I'm being silly here. <coughs> That's fine. That's fine. Stop. Stop, 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 stop. Length. Uh, I don't think it is length. Uh, I don't think you can get at that capacity number uh, without trying magic's hash map. You can say int initial size. Uh, and this dot bucket equals new ah new array list initial size. Then we say for int i less than initial size i plus plus dot buckets dot 
add. New array list. And that is a much more properly initialized thing. Uh, so now this should fail in a different way. I expected null but was bar. That's because I'm returning the wrong thing. Jelly Jar says this is material, right? Material theme. Yeah, it is. It is indeed. Dilemma. If it isn't Mr. Affiliate Sam, it is. Thank you very much. I'm up to three subscribers. Super proud of myself. Thank you again to all three of you. Uh, I was fixing a bug, and the bug was because when I'm putting things in, I'm returning the current and not the previous value. So I need to set value should return the previous value, right? Old value corresponding to entry, yeah. yeah. Uh, so return that. And if there wasn't a previous value, we return not. And then we can run the test again. Boom! Awesome. Actual, legit, test-driven development. Uh, right, gotta be up three hours early as normal. Good night. Uh, yeah, good night, Craig. Sleep well, dude. PS Twitch Prime. <laughs> You're watching too much Shroud. Okay, so... More tests. What are the tests? Do we need to write for this hash map? Uh, so we've got puts return previous value, um, public void get actually works. Actually, I'm going to add in a before block saying public void set up private. Actually, I don't even need that. What am I doing? Private final map. String, string equals new hash map. Okay, so then we say assert that under test dot put foo bar is null, then assert that under test is equal to bar. Just the basics, making sure we're getting the right stuff out. Uh, but before that we need to say is null. Didn't mean to debug it. My bad. TDD, but you wrote the test second. Well, I did a red-green refactor cycle, didn't I? There's only 20 of you here, I can bribe you. Uh, Huntex, remove contains. Are those suggestions for what I should be testing? Silly. Okay, cool. Um, this is all well and good with a few items. Uh, public void contains actually works. Whoa. Sometimes I find myself deleting random, like, whole blocks of code. I've deleted whole classes by accident before. Just, I just got no idea why. None whatsoever. Sweet. Contains works. What else have we got in here? Uh, Q 
key set values, that kind of thing. Uh, empty, let me say. Bing, then values actually works. Sweet. Uh, we have some other things in here, I'm sure we do. Entry set. Uh, this one's a, li a little bit more tricky, I suppose. Ish. Um. Hmm, try to see if there's a nice way of doing this, but I don't think there is. Has size of one. Oh. What do you mean I can't? Oh. Oh, yes. Method behind the madness, don't worry. Entry dot get key is equal to foo. My word, if I could type, it'd be dangerous. Get value is equal to bar. There we go. Fabulous. Cool. Um, what else? Key set. Uh, oh, clear. Good. All is going according to plan. Remove it, we've done, put we've done, get we've done. Okay, so contains key and contains value. Didn't I do these? I got the feeling I did these. Yeah, I did. Again, just to make sure things are fine. You could test if it grows in capacity properly. I could test that. I do plan to do... Uh, so at the moment it doesn't resize, ever. There's no resizing. So I need to write some code to actually do some resizing. Um, just want to make sure I have... Can I just not say... He's empty, I can. Uh, 
slightly more semantic. All right. Uh, yeah, I just want to make sure everything is tested correctly. It's empty then. I want to put. not exactly an excellent test of size, but we're getting all the kind of like happy path stuff out of the way. All right, that will do for now. Um, now resizing. So the way I've seen this done, um, like I elaborate previously, is there will be the concept of a, an initial size, a load factor, and a resize factor. So let's just quickly add those concepts. Private final initial initial size int. No, it's not int. This is a double load factor. Private final double resize. Not factor. Oh, I'll call it factor for now. Doesn't much matter. Uh, actually, we'll make another constructor for these. Hash map initial size double load factor double resize factor equals initial size start load factor equals load factor start resize factor equals resize factor uh, we'll say So we're going to say if it gets 75% full, we increase the size by a factor of two. That's the idea. Um, so we need to do a bunch of stuff. Um, the first thing is creating a resize method. So I will put it underneath everything down here. I'll say private void resize. And this will always do Yeah, it will always be assumed that this has been called because it needs to do an expansion. We're never gonna contract for now. So we will say uh, list list map entry the old buckets equals I think I need to actually no I need to do the other way around we say new buckets new array list of hmm thinking false master says how are you going to get it to resize itself like what's going to do the call so it's going to be on puts Right, like put is the only thing that could ever trigger it to need to resize. So after every put call, we'll check if we've exceeded the load factor, and if we have, we'll call resize. Does that make sense? So I need to be able to get at the capacity. So instead of so as well as initial capacity, I'm going to have a private int current capacity. A function to ensure capacity could also be useful. I'm not quite sure what you mean, sorry. 
uh, follow our streams. So you're just using the map interface to implement a hash table way of storing. Yes, that's precisely what I'm doing. Precisely. It's coming out looking more or less, um, more or less like the Java's hash map implementation itself. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, I need a drink. <laughs> BRB. check who it was. Uh, Tesco three pound meal deal is now following you. <laughs> awesome. Love that name. Checking after pudding sounds dangerous. Uh, why? I have a feeling I know why you think that and I can answer. I can assuage your fears. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, we're all with this for now. I'm, 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 so I'm kind of not a fan of having size and capacity. In fact, I'm very much not a size, but I'm going to call it capacity. Just, I know it's not important, but consistency is a thing. There we go. Feel better. So, we need to create, uh, also for the sake of thread safety, I am going to do synchronized here. So we will say new capacity equals current capacity multiplied by resize factor. Fine. I think I was just trying to convince myself then that casting this to an int does make sense, and I think it does. Uh, I've started using Visual Studio Code for my Java, it's pretty good. So the reason I haven't done that in the past is because I've never found a good plugin for completion and stuff like that. If one exists, I'm definitely uh, up for giving it a try. So new capacity, then we say for int i equals zero, i is less than new capacity, i plus plus, new buckets add new array list. So we initialize all of those, then then what? I'm thinking of being really cheeky. Really cheeky. <clears throat> if the load factor is close to one, you could go from being below the load factor to over a load of one with a single put. Seems like you'd need to have additional checks then for running out of space in two ways. So puts can only ever increase the size by one. I don't understand how the load factor could be exceeded. Or maybe there's an edge case that I haven't quite thought through. So what I was thinking of doing here is so I realize now that I can't make the buckets final. Because I need to resize it. Can I trigger a resize on an array list manually? Does the array list class have a resize method? Could, like, I'm wondering if I can offload this. Hmm. Not sure if I want to go down this because I do need to do the rehashing anyway. What if the size of the array is one and it's empty and then you add? Then it won't resize automatically unless you post calculate the new size as part of the function. That's what I was going to do. Yeah, after the put, I will calculate if it's over the load factor and if it isn't, I'll resize. And that should be fine. So I was going to say bucket equals new buckets. 
I thought it made you not fight him. I'm going crazy. That doesn't, that, that's silly. Uh, I'm trying to get away with... I'm trying to get away with something here, but it's kind of looking ugly. I want to use my get and put methods. Or do I just need to stop being silly and abstract them slightly? I'm hesitating because if I go down that road, I need to make an unnecessary copy of everything. So what I think I need to do instead... ...is a bit of abstraction. Bear with me here. What's the information for put? Uh, implementation for put is it just a loop? I'll put it back on the stream for you. It's this thing here. So I get the hash code and I use the hash code to get a bucket. Then I loop through the bucket until I find the key. And if I find the key, I set the value. If I don't find the key, I add a new entry into that bucket. Very, very naive and simple. Really? What's the uh, static method cannot override instance method? Well, first of all, it's going to be private. those in the wrong place for static methods. Oh, I've forgotten uh, one of those. There we go. Uh, I'm wondering if there's a way when you're putting new data into the array you can use a loop such that if it gets close to the max capacity then it increases the size during the insertion loop. Uh, I'm going to try and avoid copying. You'll see, you'll see. I have a plan here. I have a plan. Right, that's the the put has been staticified. So now I can say this instead. I can reuse that logic. I also want to do the same thing for get. This is getting a bit annoying to type. I will not type it. Oh, I need K and V. Cool. So now I have the ability in my resizing method to say stuff along the lines of Yeah, I can use entry set dot So this is doing the rehashing. Then we just need to say buckets 
equals new buckets. I think that's all there is to the resizing. We're not doing any unnecessary copying. Everything gets copied over. I think that's fine. Tesco three pound meal deal says, hi, this is probably a stupid question to you, but I've started to learn Java, pretty new to it, but I'm trying to read a folder full of 20 plus CSV files into some sort of list. This is possible. I have a few ways I've learned, but to no success. Uh, what are you struggling with? Like what do you have? Are you like hitting a specific error or specific problem or something like that? If resize if is resize needed, buckets dot. Actually, actually, I can do size greater than current capacity multiplied by load factor. And that is conservative because the int rounds down. So in our put, we say, and then if is resize needed, resize. And I think that's it. I think that's all I need. Uh, Tesco 3 pound me deal, trying not to hard code to read each file in case in the future more added to the folder. I have no idea how to not hard code. Oh, so you want to know how to like read a directory of things. Um, Java 8 added some cool stuff for this. I just realized that should be capacity. Capacity is never used anywhere. Yeah, I don't need it. So to read a, I will just put a public static void main here. So Java has this wicked new um, walk file tree method. Files dot walk file tree and we'll. We'll start at the current path. Then we create a new file visitor. And file visitors give us all kinds of oh unhandle exception, Java IO exception. Fine. So we have like pre-visit directory, visit file, visit file failed post visit directory, we don't need all of this. So we will just, instead of doing it this way, there is a simpler way. We can say new simple file visitor. Can I not do that? Uh, I thought I could do that. has protected access. I thought I'd done that before. Didn't I do that in the previous project we worked on? Let me just quickly go and check. We did this. Yeah, new simple file visitor path. Let me overrode that thing. Let's go back. Oh, now I give it the type, it's fine. Uh, and then we can override, what was it, pre visit directory or something like that? Or 
actually, let's just do visit, visit file. Visit file. Uh, and this will be called every time we visit a file. So every, if you, so if you have a folder that you know your CSV files are going to be in, you can pass in a path to them, and then this will, this function here will be called for every file that you have. So if we were to like system out print line the path, then it'll print into the console all the files in that folder. Does that help you? I'll leave it on screen just for another couple of seconds. You can always like clip the stream or something like that so you can go back and see it. And it's gone. So that should solve your problem. So that should make it a bit more robust to change. Is that literally just complaining about that? No. Not annotated method overrides method annotated with not null. What? I'll leave that as is. That is great, thank you very much. Awesome, I'm glad. Let me know how it goes. I don't need this stuff anymore. Oh, excuse me. Okay. How do we test resizing? Easy. Easy peasy. We... We create a... Resizing works. So we create a new one of these and we say that the initial capacity is 1, load factor is 1, resize factor is 2. Um, I cannot assign to a final, so I will say hash map. This is going to say that I can't shadow. Oh, I can shadow. Wonderful. So now, every time we put something in, it should resize. I mean, this should even call resize twice. But I don't, other than like passing these values in and putting things into it, I can't think of a good way of testing resizing. I think this is enough, isn't it? So I say assert that it has a size of two, assert that under test.get foo is equal to bar and that bar is equal to bears. So that's resized a couple times under the hood. Everything is still in there. Uh, that should be fine. So that's resizing. Uh, I'll put it back up on screen real quick. Where's it gone? There it is. Technically thread safe, I think. Let me hold, hold on. What about this wouldn't be thread safe? Okay, so it's possible for it to resize twice. Well, it's possible for it to resize more than once when it doesn't have to because there is no synchronization between checking if a resize is needed and doing the resize. So I don't think it's correct to say that it is thread safe, actually. Even though the resizes themselves are thread safe, it's not expected behavior. Um, is modifying an array list thread safe? I don't know. 
switching all day saying, what is this theme you're using? This is the material plugin for IntelliJ. Uh, resize the thread safe, but the hash map isn't set face. Aradius is not set. Okay, right. Aradius is not thread safe. So I would need to use some thread safe list to make this thread safe. Uh, I'm sure we can find a thread safe array list. I'm sure one exists, right? Uh. Material design still shilling, yeah. Once a Googler, always a Googler. Surely there's like concurrent list or something lying around. I know I could Google it, but whatever's. Immutable lists, don't want one of those. Random access, read only. Not you, Alexa. Getting the selection from Samuel's Audible Library. Why? Resuming Narconomics. Why? There's 38 minutes Alexa. in the chapter. Alexa, stop. How? How did she possibly infer that I asked for her to start listing my Audible Library? <laughs> oh, dear. Synchronized list? Synchronized list! Oh, it's this one. <laughs> yeah, this is on the wraps list and then just synchronizes everything. Huntex, hit me up with a thread safe list implementation that isn't going to destroy any semblance of performance that I had. Not that I, not that this is like a particularly performant implementation. Uh, okay, but I'm not, I'm not super worried about thread safeness. I think... Uh, okay, I can do better. I can do better than that by doing... Where is my put? By doing... That. Uh, check concurrent hash map and steal what they have. I could do that. I'm not going to do that on stream just now because uh, I'm ending the stream relatively soon. Just as a heads up. Um, so any kind of questions or anything you have. Uh, actually, a couple couple questions that I have for you as an audience. Um, does the go live notification like does what I put in that notification affect whether or not you come and actually watch the stream? Like. Would you like me to keep putting actual real inf information in there, or is just Sam who has gone live enough? Because uh, I've been trying to update it and actually put relevant information in the notification. I'm just not sure if it's like something you like. Uh, I had other questions, but I can't quite remember. So yeah, any any questions you have for me before I go? Uh, something I wanted to look into at some point is um, benchmarking, benchmarking this. Relevant title's good, but the notification isn't totally necessary. Oh, is, so are you saying that it, the notification isn't totally necessary because you see me post this up in ProcDisk? Or... Okay, as well, uh, classic end of the stream shill. So me and a bunch of people in chat are members of a programming community called ProcDisk. Um, HTTPS invite.progdisk.club uh, It's just a Discord server that we all hang out in and talk about programming. We talk about all kinds of stuff. We help each other with problems that we have. It's a lot of fun. I spend a lot of my time in there. Um, if you, yeah, so is Shilling Kappa. If you if you enjoy programming and you want to talk to mother, uh, other like-minded people about programming, then it's a good place to be. Uh, if you do join, feel free to kind of ping me, say hi, that kind of thing. Uh, 
Uh, does Java have built-in testing? Mm, no. Like so, JUnit is the canonical testing library that everyone uses for unit tests. Uh, I think there are some libraries out there for doing benchmark tests, but I've not used any of them. The only benchmarking libraries I've used were internal ones, back in back in the Google days. So I've never actually done benchmarking Java stuff in the real world, so to speak. It would be a good thing to give it a try too. I don't tune in at the going, line, uh, going live thing mentions a game. Yeah, that's completely fair. Like, I don't think I will be streaming gaming from now on, to be honest with you. I think this is just going to be a pure programming channel. Because the gaming streaming, like, no one really, no one really cares, right? Like, I'm not, I'm not a gaming personality of any kind. Uh, make Google release their internal library, please. Um, I will try. <laughs> the trying will not amount to much more than me saying, like, please, can has... Java needs a good benchmarking library. I've seen a few tries. I've, I've, sh I've seen. I, I have played around with at least one of them. I can't remember what the name was, but the thing that got me about it was every test had an enormous warm-up time because there is so much in the JVM that can vary between runs. Like you need a lot of warm-up because you want to avoid jit. Like you want to make sure your code has run enough time to jit the parts that are going to be jitted. You want to kind of obviously warm up caches. You want to make sure that you're not in any kind of like horrible garbage collection cycle. So you want to run enough time to get into the normal kind of garbage collecting rhythm so that you're not kind of hit by a big GC that you weren't expecting. Uh, there is Absale. They did this in C++. Maybe the same for Java. Not sure if the same reasoning applies. Absale. Let me just quickly look that up. Absale Java. Oh, is, is Absale... Absale.io, of course. Of course, what else would it be? Oh, is it specifically a C++ thing? Uh, look into the benchmark harness that benchmark Benchmark's game uses. Uh, most tests I run use something like a thousand warm cycles. That sounds reasonable. Um, yeah, I need to. I need to try and find something. Let's just, just quickly look. Java benchmarking library. Ooh! Oh, they did open source it. This is the best day. Holy balls! Nine years ago? Are you kidding me? I could have sworn this wasn't a thing. Hmm. Cool. Okay. I need to. Uh, I need to look into how this is. Uh... Does it look anything like how I remember? It does. Awesome. Cool. Okay, I think I'll be playing around with this the next stream. Cool. Uh, right. Gonna call it a night. Thank you for joining me. All that lark. And I will uh, probably stream next on Friday, I think. Uh, I think I have stuff on until Friday, but on Friday... Uh, Sophie's away, so I'll probably do a bit of a later stream. You need to stream longer. Yeah, it's, uh, I so I really can't. <laughs> um, I kind of have to go to bed around about now in order to wake up in time for work. I can't just look this good on no sleep, you know. Uh, I can't really stream before when I start because... I get home and I have to cook some dinner and eat my dinner and that kind of thing, so I really only have that slot in which to stream. Except on weekends and Fridays and stuff like that. Quit work. <laughs> hey, if you if you want to fund that, then I'm happy to do it. If you, I mean, just, just roll in those tier 3 subs. Pretty please. Yeah, so other than that, like Fridays, I think would be a longer stream, and weekends can be a longer stream, but weekdays really can't, sadly. 
I could move to a different um, different time zone, maybe. Emotes and I sub. Emotes are on the way. I'm thinking about emotes. Emotes are on my mind. Promise. I'll have something something more concrete to say in about two weeks. Hold me to that. Awesome. Good night. Thank you for joining, and I will see you all again, hopefully on Friday.